Blog Talk Radio. Hey, you're listening to the Meat Magazine interview show on Blog Talk Radio. I'm your host, Meat Magazine, and I have a great guest today. His name is James Worthy. He's a music producer, an actor, a model, and the CEO of Dream Music Group. And I'm going to check the line to see if he's here. Let's see. Hello. What's up? It's James Worthy. How's it going, James? I'm good, man. I'm blessed. How are you? All right. I'm doing good, too. Um, can you please introduce yourself to the listeners and let us know a little bit about what you do and who you are? Sure. Uh, well, yeah, I go by the name of James Worthy, uh, musician, songwriter, uh, model, and actor. You name it, I do it. Um, just pretty much a all-around guy in the entertainment industry. You know, I've, I've been in the the industry about seven years now, so it's it's been a while. Uh, it's been a journey uh, throughout all of these these years and this time. But you know, just steady, keep it moving, man, and and making history. Yeah, that sounds good. Now, from what I understand, you've collaborated with everybody from Bobby Brown to his son Bobby Brown Jr., Truth Hurts, Yo Gotti, Sarah Stokes, everybody. Now, yeah, that's a very Impressive list of collaborators. Is there anybody that you haven't worked with that you would like to work with in music? Oh man, there's there's so many. Um, I mean, I'm I'm a big fan of Kanye West. I'm a big fan of Frank Ocean. Uh, I'm a big. Um, I like Katy Perry. You know, I like Maroon Five. You know, there's there's so many different artists that I would like to tackle in, a record with. But um, you know, it's there's so many other projects coming along as well that I, I think you guys would really be interested in as well. So, you know, just got to stay tuned. Right. Now, who are you currently working with at the moment? Uh, well, of course, I'm still working with Sarah. You know, we have a plethora of records that we're working on um, for her EP as well. So I'm doing all of her new music. Uh, of course, Truth Hurts. Uh, she's doing other music as well, uh, working with uh, Men at Large, the R&B group. Uh, working on their album, and I'm um, also I have a uh, Dave Tolliver of Men at Large uh, working on his um, album, which we'll be releasing on September 4th online. Uh, we have a single off the album called Concert, so that'll be out pretty soon. Uh, working on Jay Holiday right now. Uh, working on um, Ishi Macho. She's of uh, Arrested Development. Uh, she's working on a new album, so working on a lot of different projects. Right. Now, I I know a lot of producers don't like to play favorites, but, you know, I once heard Timberland say that, you know, his favorite collaborators were Jay-Z and Justin Timberlake. Now, is there anybody that you particularly like to work with the most or you feel that you do your best work with? Uh, that's that's kind of hard a little bit. You know, I, I really have different experiences with, with all of my clients, but you know, it, I guess it really just depends on what we're working on. You know, I have a great time working with Sarah, have a great time working with Truth, great time working with Avant. You know, there's, there's just a lot of different people I have different experiences with, but they're all great in their own right. All right. That, that definitely makes sense. Now, from what I understand, you're not originally from Atlanta, but you're there now. Where are you originally from? Um, I'm originally from New York. I've uh, been in Atlanta for quite some time, but uh, originally from New York. Okay. Now, Atlanta's like like little Hollywood at this point. I mean, it's, it's pretty <laughs> much a star-studded place. Uh, are there any odd or unexpected places you've ever bumped into celebrities? Ooh, um... I wouldn't say odd. I, I would just say, you know, I guess spur the moment kind of thing or just maybe a um, I just didn't know they were going to be there at the time kind of place. Um, you know, you never know nowadays. You can meet anybody anywhere. Um, so it really doesn't even matter what the place is. You just got to make sure your approach is right. <laughs> right, most definitely. Now, your nickname is J Dreams. How did you come up with that nickname? You know what? Um, I didn't even come up with that nickname. Like, it was more of just a, a fan nickname than anything. Um, you know, it kind of started in the beginning of my career. Um, you know, I just gained a fan base, and 
you know, of course, my name is James, and, you know, I guess the people kind of took it as, you know, my career path and my dream was to be in the music industry and, and be in entertainment. So, you know, I guess they kind of put the two and two together and, you know, made it Jay Dreams. Yeah, that definitely makes sense. Now, I, from what I understand, the name of your company is Dream Music Group. Now, yes. did that name come from the nickname Jay Dreams? You know what? Ironically, it didn't. Um, you know, it just kind of came about. Um, I had a dream, you know, one uh, random night, and I just knew that I was going to be successful in the music industry, and I knew that um, what I wanted to do was destined for me. You know, there's no shortcuts. There's no retirement in this for me. You know, it's just something that I really want to accomplish and do. Um, so I kind of just took that inspiration and, you know, I formed Dream Music Group. Right. Now you're making your dreams come true. <laughs> so yeah, Absolutely. It, it, it all comes together. Now, when you were growing up, were you a band, rather in band at school, or were you formally trained in the art of music? Uh, a little bit. Um, I wasn't really trained. Um, I learned a lot of things through, you know, experience and being around different things. So I kind of took it through that, you know, in, in middle school and high school, you know, I played uh, different instruments just to experiment with, but, you know, nothing uh, classically trained or anything like that. But, um, you know, like I said, I just kind of played by experience and by ear and learning different techniques throughout the years and, you know, just perfecting my craft. Right. Well, you know, sometimes it is best to to learn on your own. You know, you, it's like you never know what you could come up with. And I know a lot of people, for example, who are formally trained, kind of get stuck in a, a certain playing style. And yeah. And it's like, you know, it's kind of difficult to add your own little twist to it. Now, who were some of the musicians, and what are some of the songs that you listen to that influenced you to want to become a producer? Oh wow. Uh... I was a big fan of Quincy Jones. Um, I was a big fan of Q-Tip, big fan of Timberland, um, Dr. Dre, you know, just any anybody who was really uh, instrumental and, and innovative in what they were trying to accomplish. You know, these guys have all made their marks um, in this industry um, through their own right. You know, they've made uh, classic material. And um, that's something that I, I truly respect and I gravitate towards um, whenever I look up to someone, you know, like those guys. Um, you know, I can remember, you know, back in the day, I used to listen to Drew Hill all the time. You know, Drew Hill, man, I think their their first album, I believe, uh, Into the Dragon, man, I, it was just great to me. You know, real R&B, real soul, real lyrical content, you know, I really want to hear that again, you know, that, that really drew me in um, a lot, so shout out to those guys. Yeah, and, you know, now that you said that, I, I would actually love to hear Cisco, particularly, actually, I would like to hear the whole group, but particularly yeah. Cisco on one of your tracks, I would love to hear what that would sound like. Yeah, my, you and me both, I, you know, these, these guys are, you know, uh, legends in their own right, you know, they've pretty much open a lot of doors for, for these R and B groups, man, and these and really solo R and B artists, you know, um classic material, you know. Right. Now, now besides Drew Hill, I also heard that you're a super fan of Michael Jackson. Now yes. if you could get your hands on some unreleased vocal tracks from Michael, what would you do with them? Like <laughs> would you maybe put it to a trap beat or maybe some Euro pop? What what direction would you go in? You know what? That's that's really interesting. I really don't know what approach I would take with that. I just how I, I would have to experiment with that and and see what I could come up with. You know, that would be very interesting. Um, you know, when you, anything with Michael Jackson, you know, you got to bring your A game. You know, it's it has to be something out of this world. So it's something I really would have to hone in on. Right. Now, from what I understand, you were nominated for an Emmy Award and a BET Award. Did you attend the ceremonies the times you were nominated? 
Um, for the BET, um, I did attend the ceremony for the BET, which was great. Um, you know, great experience. You know, it's, it's always a good experience when you when you attend a award shows like that. You know, it's cool vibes, and you know, you're meeting all your peers and your friends, and, and meeting new people as well. That's always good. As far as the Emmy, um, I definitely want to clear that one up. I definitely haven't been nominated for an Emmy yet. I'm not sure where they got that. Uh, that uh, info from, but hey, I, I'll run with it. <laughs> okay, the, that's that's what they were saying, you know, on on um, different places on the internet. And I said to myself, "Wow, that's that's huge, you know, that's great, you know." And I, and I kind of, you know, I, I I wasn't sure whether or not I was going to ask you about that because you know how the internet is; everything isn't, you yeah. Know, you know, sometimes people say things I, that aren't, you know, totally true. So I figured I would ask you to, you know, make sure whether or not that was actually true. But I'm pretty sure you'll be nominated for one in the near future. So, hey, we got it out there before, oh, yeah. <laughs> before it was happening. So. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's now, coming. What are some of the qualities that you look for in artists who you want to work with? Um, I look for uh, professionalism. I look for passion. I look for drive. And I look for just the mindset of being a trendsetter and an innovator. You know, I I see too many people doing the same things over and over and over. And, you know, I I guess it's cool for the time being, but, you know, that can't be your only focus um, each time. You know, when I work with certain people, there has to be something or something that's going to be brought to the table that's going to be outside the element or the box. You know, I, I hate recreating records and, you know, it's all about making and creating moments that's going to last, you know, from now until, you know, years and years and years from now. You know, that's my whole uh, mind mindset and, and way of thinking. You know, we have to inspire people who want to follow their dreams as well. Right. Yeah, definitely. I, I noticed that, too, like with the whole originality factor. You know, sometimes I listen to these tracks and I can't tell – one from the other, like, I remember one time recently I was listening to somebody's song and I said, isn't that so-and-so song called so-and-so? And then come to find out it was, it was something completely different. And I said, wow, yeah. if I played both these songs at the same time, one laid over the other, it, they would probably pretty much match up perfectly. It, yeah, yeah. It, it's unbelievable. Now, when you're in the studio and you're creating a track, do you usually start with drums, a bass line, a lead? How do you go about constructing your music? Uh, you know what? It it depends sometimes. You know, sometimes I may start out with the drums. I may start out with just a, a simple chord progression or a melody. I may start out uh, with an acapella that I may have laid down and, and kind of form the track around that. You know, it, it kind of just depends on what I'm feeling and, and where I'm trying to go with the track. Um, you know, I may start something and come back to it uh, in a day or two, you know, it just kind of depends on the moment. 